this finance thing why is it not working the devil must be attacking me i told you that spirits are opportunists they have found a loophole in your understanding and built a stronghold around it i can tell you no spirit is as powerful as they look it is the gap the space that our ignorance has provided in their life for as long as the demons find the vessel swept but empty they will always call their account. regardless the prophetic word that comes year after year regardless what resolutions you make year after year in ignorance your lot is already defined in ignorance i don't need to be a prophet to reveal what your tomorrow will be just show me the abundance of ignorance you have decided to keep and with the precision of an artist i can paint your tomorrow the first lesson that we learn from an overcomer is that ignorance is not a demon you do not solve the problem of ignorance just by casting it out. You go for knowledge. Lesson number one from an overcomer, ignorance is not a demon. The problem of ignorance is not solved by casting it away. There are spirits that enhance an ignorant person's remaining in that state. But essentially, the starting point for all men is ignorance. All men start in ignorance by default. It is not a negative condition until it is allowed to prolong or be prolonged in your life. Are we together? Yes. It is the remaining of ignorance that makes it a problem. All men begin their journey in destiny in ignorance, including Jesus. The Spirit of God drove Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 to go and pray and to be tempted of the devil. But it was not the Spirit of God that drove him at age 13 to go to the temple. As an act of his will, he went to the temple and invested time. Aware of his ignorance, he began to do something about it. Jesus was not the only young man in his day, but he was one of the few who dedicated themselves to learn. Ignorance is not a demon. There are many believers who want a short-term, fast-fix solution to the issue of ignorance and most church people especially in africa just believe that with one prophetic declaration age-long ignorance will suddenly evaporate out of your mind leaving you with superior wisdom it does not happen like that the cure for ignorance is not just prayer the cure for ignorance is not just deliverance the cure for ignorance is the discipline to stay with light until light drives away darkness lessons from an overcomer ignorance is not a demon many people today that includes men and women of god in ministry that includes family people that includes aspiring people in our world today are left at the mercy of their ignorance they continue to fail and to recycle pain perpetually bringing all kinds of flimsy excuses and justifications and many of them have invented all kinds of imbalanced strategies to deal with the ignorance first and foremost many will not even admit that they are in ignorance can i tell you a real miracle begins at the point where you are aware of your state of ignorance even if you do not know the way out yet that you are aware that i am in this state of ignorance already begins to put you in a position of victory for as long as you live i want you to learn and to know this ignorance is not a demon all men including the ones who you call overcomers started from a standpoint of ignorance are we learning second timothy chapter 2 from verse 15. second timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. it says study to show yourself approved unto god can you imagine that receiving an approval unto god as far as destiny actualization is concerned has a dimension of it that only study can bring a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth there is a relationship between laziness and shame the bible says study to show yourself approved and that in doing that there will be no need for shame proverbs chapter 1 please from verse 20. please be patient as i read while you learn wisdom crieth without it says she uttereth her voice in the streets next verse she crieth in the chief place of concourse and in the openings of the gates in the city she uttereth her voice this is proverbs now how long ye simple the word simple there is the word ignorant will you love ignorance or simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge next verse it says turn you at my reproof wisdom is speaking behold i will pour out my spirit upon you i will make known my words unto you uh-huh 
because I have called wisdom, knowledge, and you have refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded me. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would not, and would none of my reproof. Uh -huh. I will also laugh at your calamity, he says. I will mock when fear cometh, the consequences of ignorance. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they will not find me. 29. It says, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Verse 30. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Two more verses. For the turning away of the simple or the ignorant shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Ignorance is not a demon. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. You want to actualize destiny and you want to live a victorious life. You must learn to take responsibility by the spirit and to contend for high levels of spiritual illumination. Hallelujah. Another angle to this first point is that just because you are enlightened in an area does not cover for the darkness in another area. Every area must be uniquely pursued to get light. You may have light in the area of healing, but it will not bring you prosperity by default. All the various dimensions of your life, you must pay attention to every one of them and to pursue light. Hallelujah. Therein lies the fallacy of short-term success. You can excel in an area and usually results have a way of flattering us because in the presence of results in an area, it is difficult to admit that you are ignorant in another area. After all, you have results. You may be an excellent preacher, but you may be a bad leader. Are we together now? And because of the results that you get in preaching, it will bring you to a point where it will be difficult to admit that you need to have leadership built in you because you judge by the sincerity of your priesthood and you will automatically assume that because I preach and people are blessed, it then means that I'm ex an, an, an exceptional leader. You can be a responsible father in terms of your willingness to help your children, but ignorant of the principles that make you a father indeed. Hallelujah. Dimensional success is dangerous because you will excel in one area and believe that just because of the excellence in that area, there is no need for improvement or development in any other area. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. Very profound scripture. The Bible says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Hallelujah. It is important for us to know that for you to excel in life, you must come to terms with the fact that getting light, light that empowers, the knowledge, the information that you need to rise and thrive, you will not be spoon fed with it. You have to challenge yourself and rise to the occasion. It will take a long time for you to have knowledge. Listen, it took one day for the Holy Spirit to come upon the apostles, but it did not take one day for them to be transformed, to be prepared for that impartation. The ratio of impartation to transformation was three and a half years to one day. There was one day of Pentecost, but there was no one day of lecture. Many years of lecture. Jesus teaching them, helping them, allowing them to ask questions. When they were now prepared, I have taught you here, Koinonia, that the value of the anointing is that it comes upon a vessel that is enlightened and transformed. When you try to bring impartation upon a life and a vessel that rejects enlightenment and rejects transformation, you only wasted that impartation. It will have no profit. Ignorance is not a demon. This finance thing, why is it not working? The devil must be attacking me. I told you that spirits are opportunists. They have found a loophole in your understanding and built a stronghold around it. I can tell you no spirit is as powerful as they look. It is the gap, the space that our ignorance has provided in their life. For as long as the demons find the vessel swept but empty, they will always call their kind and make the, the person states to be worse than the first. When I found this, I made up my mind that anything that does not work in my life, I will not blame anybody. I will take responsibility by God and I will sit down. Remember my teaching um, last week? 
the first lesson we learn from overcomers is that there are people who take the responsibility to contend for light how do you know light has come by the absence of darkness if darkness is still there you do not have light enough the ultimate test for the presence of light is the absence of darkness write it down please the ultimate test for the presence of light is the absence the dispelling of darkness many believers are plagued with the cancer of ignorance ignorance about the ways of the kingdom ignorance about the laws of the cosmos I hope you know that this universe was not designed by an intelligent God to just be run with, with, with blind ideas. There are exact laws, spiritual laws, but there are exact natural laws. There are laws. You find these laws scattered in biology. You find these laws scattered in agriculture. You find these laws scattered in engineering. All those today we call scientists are men who have stumbled across the laws that God created to govern the activities of the cosmos. There are laws that control the realm of the spirit, but there are laws that control the earth. For instance, while the earth remaineth, it's not a spiritual law alone. It is a law that applies to all men. Now, there are certain principles that only apply to believers, but there are principles that apply to all men. They are the laws of the universe. My question is, how many of them do you not know? And how many of them are you currently a victim of? Lessons from an overcomer. Ignorance is not a demon. That means everybody has a chance to as quick as your passion can afford you get out of a realm of ignorance you must take responsibility and say in the name of jesus i am tired of wallowing around this ignorance you came from a family where no one has risen no glory no beauty i can tell you for as long as you keep blaming people and hoping like we say in nigeria one day go better that is just a um, um is a wise saying that does not have any biblical basis it will not work time does not change things time only reveals Ignorance is not a demon. The day you begin to take responsibility over your life and over your destiny, obtaining grace and assistance from the Spirit, and you go through the labor of contending for light, you are now subscribing for your exit out of your realm of shame, out of your realm of mediocrity, out of the realm where nothing seems to be working. Behind everything that works is light. Light is the battery that powers everything that works. Behind every great business is an information that the owner of that business knows. Behind every great ministry, I tell you sincerely, there are secrets. Men rise and they stand upon the abundance of the secrets, the mysteries and the principles that they have found. There are laws that govern the anointing. There are laws that govern leadership. There are laws that govern influence. There are laws that govern abundance. There are laws that govern relationships. There are laws that govern restoration. Are we together? There are laws that govern longevity. It is your assignment under God to find these laws by the Spirit. Can I tell you, and I say this with every sense of humility, happy are you when God plants you under a man of God who by sacrifice has distilled these laws and brings it cheaply for you. That is a real, he has brought, um, he has subsidized the price that you have to pay. This is the blessing you get when you come to the house of God that people have paid the price by the spirit and through the sacrifice of alignment the labor of mentorship the sacrifice of adaptation to get these truths together distill them and to communicate them with grace lessons from an overcomer there is no overcomer who sits on the throne of glory in ignorance there is a realm where ignorance is not permitted the gate will not open did you hear what i said there is a realm where ignorance is not permitted. Even the worst of men in that realm is still sufficiently ignorant or sufficiently knowledgeable. There is a realm where ignorance cannot pass beyond. It is up to you to make up your mind right now, listening to me here and across the globe, whether you are ready to remain. Did you know that regardless the prophetic word that comes year after year, regardless what resolutions you make year after year, in ignorance, your lot is already defined. In ignorance I don't need to be a prophet to reveal what your tomorrow will be just show me the abundance of ignorance you have decided to keep and with the precision of an artist I can paint your tomorrow not by word of knowledge 
There are many people who their 10 years will look like today. In fact, worse than today. It is not prophesying doom. It is that the level of emotional attachment they have to ignorance will not allow them rise. They are so attached to ignorance, they dread the discipline of knowledge. Are we learning? Koinonia is quiet. Amen. We came to church. When I find out you are quiet, we'll sing. I will get your spirit up and continue what I'm doing. Amen. Is someone learning? So imagine with me that there are two seats here on stage. One seat is for you. You are now seated there. And the other seat is occupied by a very old ancient man who is talking to you, giving you an opportunity to learn. This is what is happening to you today. The name of that man who is seated there is an overcomer. Whether you call him Jesus, whether you call him Paul, whether you call him Abraham, whether you call him whatever it is, there is one name that binds them all. They are overcomers. And they are letting us into their lives and into their scars. And the first lesson that they are teaching us tonight is that ignorance is not a demon. It does not respond to sentiments. It does not respond to all kinds of prejudices. You must be willing and ready to contend for light. High level spiritual illumination is what cures darkness from your life. Wow, what a powerful message from God's servant. We are going to be sharing in this series from henceforth throughout this week about the lessons of an overcomer. We are sitting down to hear the lessons in the life of an overcomer that we can apply into our lives in present day. The Bible says that um, being ignorant is, is likely to destruction. I'm paraphrasing it. Like ignorance is one key to being destroyed if you don't know you don't have knowledge you will be destroyed even if you have god's people hallelujah because the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge knowledge i was looking for a way to paraphrase that statement right so one way that you must embrace to have a life of victory is to to have light in every area and not have big light and i think this word is a word in season because the last message we shared was talking about light too on this channel so I, I i pray that believers will go for light indeed because ignorance is not a demon as in it's not a demon you need to go for light some things are knowledge based some attacks are knowledge based some authority, some things you, you that will end in your life is because light has come, not because you said in the name of Jesus. Just knowing alone will make darkness in that area of your life to disappear. So you have to sit down and take look introspectively into your life. What area of your life needs light the most? You know, and begin to write it down and make it a point of duty to work on that area of your life and that's why i really advise you transform dear believers is to get a journal um journaling is very important sometimes just sit down and write down things just tell yourself this area this area i need to grow more on it this should be my project for next year don't rush it you could choose to focus on two three areas of your life before the year gets on then three months on one area three months on one area and you see yourself living a whole uh holistic christian life this is the commentary section. My name is Kola Dave Godman, <laughs> and I bring you commentaries on, on sermons preached by God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. I have some tra some transformed believer um, subscribers that call me Kola Dave. <laughs> I know that it's maybe because of the Google Translate. Um, actually, I will write down my name later on this commentary section so that you would see it and be able to pronounce it very well. Thank you so much for celebrating with me on my newborn arrival on the baby addition that god made to my family i appreciate it a lot i saw your comments um, in the last video i made thank you so much for that although i did not post it on my community tab maybe i will later to announce the goodness of god over my life so thank you so much i'll see you when we post the next lesson this is lesson number one for the week for today tomorrow we'll be posting the next one see you and, and god bless you to the next time bye